What's up guys, in this video we're going to be piecing together a budget garage gym build. Now a few things to keep in mind here is that the term budget is going to be different for each person out there. So when I say budget, I mean under a thousand bucks. And then another thing to keep in mind is depending on how strong you are, it's going to depend, you know, that's going to determine how much weight that you need to lift. If you're stronger and you need to purchase more weights, that's obviously going to cost more. So depending on how strong you are, that's going to add to the number or take away from the number, but we're going to keep it as far under a thousand bucks as possible. So we'll talk about some different options for squat racks, squat stands, half rack, full rack, that kind of thing, which one you should go with. Uh, we'll talk about some different options there. And then we'll talk about some add-ons if you have some money left over. And then, you know, we can talk about where you can save some money when applicable. Before we get into the video, hi, my name is Ryan Treadway, founder of TreadwayTraining.com, where we help busy professionals get more results in less time through online training. If you want more information on body transforming training and nutrition topics, consider subscribing. And we're putting out more than one video per week right now. We're putting out videos on Wednesday and Saturday, and we're talking a lot about home gym training topics at the moment. So if that's something that you're interested in, consider subscribing and turning on notifications. The first thing we're gonna take a look at is squat stands. Now this is gonna be the cheapest way to be able to perform squats, but it's also the least safe. So you just have these two independent stands. In some cases, they may have a brace that holds them together, but in general, we're just looking at two uprights and that's it. There's no safeties really. I mean, there are tiny safeties, but I would not trust those to catch the bar if I had to bail out. So this is an option. It's going to save you a ton of money so you can get them as cheap as 50 bucks. Uh, but that's not what we're going to focus on. So we'll kind of move on from that. The next thing that we're going to talk about is Rogue. So a lot of people know the name Rogue. They want Rogue equipment. But if you're looking at budget garage gym builds, you're not going to be able to do Rogue. So I mainly just have this pulled up just to show you that this isn't what you're going to be looking at. So if we look at a squat stand from Rogue, we're looking at 275. So that's going to be the cheapest, the cheapest one that we have right here. There's no pull up bar. There's nothing. It's just two uprights and a brace holding them together. So that's $275 just for that. That's not what we're going to go, want to go with. So if we look at Rep Fitness, which is a brand that I've been liking a lot here lately, I think they're probably the best in terms of quality to price ratio. So if we look right here, we have a full power rack for 239 bucks. So we're cheaper than the squat stand from Rogue. So we'll go ahead and we'll get rid of that guy. And then if we look at a squat rack, a full power rack from Rogue, the cheapest option is going to be this $569 guy right here. So again, we'll get rid of that guy. We'll come back over to Rep. And the reason why I like this one is not only is it only $239, you get a few features with this rack that are standard here, but are add-ons for other racks. So it comes with the safeties, comes with Jacobs, of course. Now, a few cool things here is you get this multi-grip pull-up bar, standard, included in that $239 price, and then you also get numbered uprights. So you see, it's real, it's real small, but if you look close, you can see that it's numbered every five notches. That's laser cut holes there. That's something that is an add-on for most racks or something only available in the more expensive racks. And then looking at Titan, uh, kind of comparing it to that one, because that's kind of the, the, the main budget friendly option for most people. So if we take a look at Titan, so if we look at the T3, which is what I would recommend you get if you do go with Titan, we have a bolt together construction here. So you see right here, all of this, all the uprights are bolted together, nothing is welded. And I have personally used a Titan T3 and unless you're bolting this to the floor, this is a shackledy mess. So if you're not bolting to the floor, I would not recommend going with a T3. If you look at the Rep PR1100, we have a flat foot design and a back brace. There's no need to bolt this one down, so it's going to be nice and stable even without bolting it down. Now, again, if you do plan on bolting it down, you can go with the T3, no problem. It'll be nice and stable if it's anchored down. But if you're renting or if you just don't want to put holes in the concrete in your garage or basement, 
then you can go with this guy. And one advantage that the T3 has over the PR1100 from RIP is we have this west side spacing right here. Depending on you know what type of lifting you're doing, if you're a very serious power lifter, that might be something that you want. Because if we look over at the 1100, there is no uh, there is no west side spacing. It is three inch spacing throughout, I believe. Yeah, upright hole spacing three inches apart. And so another big advantage that I've already mentioned for the rep PR 1100 is the price. So 239 bucks for this guy. 399 bucks for this guy. So let's say you had 500 bucks that you could dedicate specifically to a rack. You could get the PR 1100 and some add-ons for the same price as the T3. Now, one thing that you should keep in mind here is that Titan does offer free shipping. So this is 239 plus shipping, whereas the T3 is 399 total. So factor in maybe an extra hundred bucks for shipping and so we can really look at this as 339 but still we can still add to this if we want to now we can add a uh, lat pull and a low row add-on that's a good one that you can have you can do dip bar attachments you can do extra weight horns you can do a landmine attachment which is a great thing that i would definitely uh, recommend adding i believe it's uh, 49 bucks when it's in stock and this can add a lot of variety to your workouts for not a lot of money and rep actually has a garage gym builder which i can't walk through right now because of the stock so low if you're watching this in early 2020 you know that everything's out of stock everywhere so i can't walk you through uh, the garage gym builder at the moment but keep in mind that that is an option on the rep website and can save you a few bucks so if you are watching this video at a point in time where things have kind of gone back to normal a little bit and stock is a little bit more readily available, then definitely check out that option. So you could do this rack with their garage gym builder, walk through the options, you know, get your bar, get your plates, all that stuff. And it will save you a few bucks doing the builder versus doing everything pieced out individually. Now, another thing you can check out is the Bells of Steel website. One of my clients actually has the 4.1 rack and likes it a lot. And the good thing about this rack is there are so many attachments that you can do with this guy. So you can do the lat pull low row attachment. You can do a cable crossover, which again, that's you know the price of the whole rack. So this is kind of getting out of budget territory or it's more expensive than the whole rack rather. So just, this is more of a looking into the future if you wanted to add to it eventually. There's a lot of attachments that you have to work with here. So you have just a regular old pull down with a weight pin on one side, have a dip bar, have jammer arms, you have a belt squat, you have monolith arms, a bar holder, additional safeties if you want to squat off the front of the rack. We have landmine again here. We have leg roller if you want to do single leg stuff. We have roller cups, additional uh, plate storage pins. We have sandwich style J cups and then extra just regular uh, J cups. So there's a lot of things that you can add to the power rack here. And Bells of Steel also has a garage gym builder. So you can walk through their building process. I'll link all this stuff below. Again, I can't walk you through the building process. There is a video by Brandon Campbell that I will link below if you want to see the Bells of Steel uh, garage gym builder options so you can just walk through all of these options and you're saving some money along the way if you want to do that so if you're watching this at a point in time in the future where things again are a little bit more available this would be a very good option that you could go with but right now we can't do that they only have a couple of their squat racks in stock at the moment and the 4.1 which is uh, one that you can't purchase at the moment is probably the one that i would recommend most people to go with and speaking of stock one thing that i do want to mention real quick is the one thing that i'm liking about rep fitness what they're doing right now is you can actually take pre-orders for their restock which is coming you know right here it says april 30th may 15th so everybody's out of stock right now but most places you know you're just having to check back every day and hope that you can purchase now with the rep website, they're actually taking pre-orders for their restock. So you just go ahead and buy it now 
and then they'll just ship it out to you when the stock comes available. So that's one thing, uh, one reason why I would consider going with rep. Now, one more thing I do want to mention about the PR1100 is you can also get this specific rack on Amazon. They don't sell all of their racks on Amazon, but this is one that you can get there. So you can keep an eye on Amazon for that one as well. It is currently unavailable. It's out of stock on Amazon, but if you can catch it there, and get free shipping, that'll save you a few bucks as well. Now getting into barbells, how strong you are and what your goals are is gonna largely depend on which route you should go on a barbell. There are a lot of different barbells for a lot of different purposes, but when we're talking about budget gym builds, we're gonna wanna get away with the cheapest one that we can get that will do the job. Now that said, we don't wanna go to you know your local sporting goods store and get a $50 barbell and expect that to do the job because the knurling is going to be terrible. If you ever want to get better at deadlifts and start lifting heavyweight on deadlifts and you have no knurling to grip onto, that's going to be a problem later on down the road and you're just going to have to buy another barbell. But looking at the rep basic barbell, this is only 89 bucks and I've heard good things about it. The knurl is pretty good for the price. So, I mean, if you want to get started with a pretty good barbell, this is a, a good route to go for only 89 bucks. I've also heard good things about the bare naked powerlifting bar from Bells of Steel, but keep in mind that it is 199 bucks, so that's gonna jump up the price just a little bit. So I would personally recommend you get the bar from the website that you're getting your other stuff from to save on shipping costs, unless you can get it with free shipping. So. I would go with the rep basic barbell. So if we're looking at 239 with the rack and we're not getting any extra attachments and we're looking at 89 for the barbell, we're at 328 so far, keeping in mind that we're gonna have to pay for shipping. Now, when we're looking at a bench, there's a couple things to consider here. When we're talking about budget options, we're gonna wanna get the cheapest one, again, that will do the job. So what I would recommend you do is to get a flat bench because if you get a cheap, adjustable bench it's not going to be very stable it's not going to be very safe in my opinion um, i've heard stories of people doing incline bench on it on cheap adjustable benches and then the part where it adjusts actually breaks and then they fall backwards which is definitely not safe so i would recommend getting a flat bench if you're on a budget the amazon basics bench is a great option which it's currently not in stock but if you're watching this again later than early 2020 then you'll probably be able to find this in stock and it's only 50 bucks with prime shipping obviously so 50 bucks for a pretty good bench i actually watched a video where coop from garage gyms drug this bench behind a truck down the road while doing dumbbell bench on it just to show how sturdy it was for the price now if you want to go with rep again I recommend getting as much equipment from the same place as possible when we're factoring in saving shippings, which obviously if we're getting the Amazon bench, then that one has free shipping. Uh, but looking at the uh, rep offerings, you can get the FB3000 for 93 bucks. That's a very good price. If you wanted to spend a little bit more, if you were a serious power lifter and you wanted to go with a competition style bench you could get the fb5000 comp bench or you could get the fb5000 with the wide pad or if you wanted to get a really good adjustable bench then you could go with the ab3100 which is a great bench it's adjustable and it's only 189 bucks but for the price we're going to go with the amazon basic bench so that's going to add 50 bucks with no shipping to our price now getting into the actual weight plates themselves this is an area where you can save some money i would recommend getting plates second hand if possible if you can find a pretty good deal on facebook marketplace or craigslist which right now uh you might not want to do that you want to avoid getting sick but you know if you're watching this later on after early 2020 then getting them second hand might be a good idea but in general, you're going to want to just get the cheapest plates you can get. Unless you are a high-level power lifter or Olympic lifter and you need those very precise calibrated plates, I would recommend just getting your standard cast iron plates. It's going to be the best bet. 
Uh, you know, it's going to do the job. It's going to be the cheapest out there, especially when we're talking about a budget garage gym. And again, I would recommend you get your plates from the place that you get the rest of your stuff just to keep those shipping costs down. So in this case, we would be going with Rep Fitness standard iron plates. Now, in terms of how many weight plates you need, that's going to be dependent on your personal strength levels or the strength levels of whoever's going to be working out with you at your garage gym. But for most people, for the average person, you're going to at least need a pair of two and a halfs, a pair of fives. You're going to need two pairs of tens. You're going to need a pair of 25s. And then when it comes to the 45 pound plates, that's when, you know, you're going to just need however many is appropriate for your strength level. So if this were me building it for my garage gym, I would get uh, four pairs of 45s. But again, uh, it's going to be dependent on your strength level. So I'm going to say we're going to talk about an early to intermediate lifter. So we'll get two pairs of 45s. So we'll add the price for that. So we're looking at 689 bucks for your whole garage gym setup. Now keep in mind that we are going to have to pay shipping on the stuff that's not coming from Amazon. So if you were able to get the uh, 1100 rack from Amazon, that would save you a few bucks there. Uh, but right now it's not in stock there. We're going to be looking at doing pre-orders through Rep Fitness. So we're going to factor in the, sh the shipping on that and all the other stuff that we're getting from Rep. So we're going to look at probably about 800 bucks. Now, again, that's 800 bucks for a fully stocked gym with brand new equipment only. So if you're watching this after early 2020 and you're not having to worry about getting sick anymore just from seeing people in public, then you could go with a bunch of used stuff. You could get used weight plates, stuff like that, and you could save a bunch of money that way. And keep in mind, if you're watching this, you know, summer 2020, fall 2020, whenever all of this mess is over and the gyms are open back up, there's going to be a flood of gently used because most people are just jumping the gun, buying stuff so they can work out at home and then they're never going to use it again. Stuff that's just going to be on the market for you to buy secondhand. So keep that in mind, depending on when you're watching this video, there's going to be a lot of equipment on sale in the not too distant future or right now, again, depending on when you're watching this video. So you might be able to get all of this same type of stuff for a lot less money from people just wanting to get it out of their house. So that's something to keep in mind as well. But let's say, you know, hey, you have a thousand bucks to spend and you wanted to add something to this. The first thing that I would recommend adding to this would be the lap pull slash low row attachment for the PR 1100. That's gonna have you coming in right at a thousand bucks, maybe just a hair under a thousand bucks. And then that's gonna have so much variety for that workout. Or you could add in the landmine attachment, which was 50 bucks. And that you might be able to add both of those things and still be under a thousand, depending on how much weight that you're getting with your gym. So, you know, right at or just under a thousand bucks and you have the landmine attachment, you're able to do all those leverage movements, you're able to do the rows, you're able to do the lap pull downs, you're able to do the tricep push downs, you're able to do, you know, cable curls, cable kickbacks, all of that type of stuff for a thousand bucks or maybe just under. That's a lot of versatility that you have going just for, you know, a little under a thousand bucks. So again, the price is going to vary depending on if you want to add attachments to it or how much weight that you need personally, or if you want to go with one of the better barbells. So again, it's variable, but this will just give you an idea of what you're looking at when you're building a home gym. Now make sure to stick around to the next video because we're going to be talking about a more elaborate garage gym setup. So let's say maybe you have a little bit more than a thousand bucks to spend and you want to be able to have a really nice garage gym setup. Maybe this isn't just a holdover until the gym's uh, open back for you. Maybe this is a permanent, hey, I'm going to start working out from home from now on and I want a really nice setup then that next video that I put out, which will be Saturday, that video will be for you. So we'll talk about some more high-end squat racks. We'll talk about uh, some more attachments, you know, some uh, adjustable dumbbells that you could add on to be able to do all that dumbbell stuff. So we'll talk about a lot more stuff that you can add on if you're willing to spend a little bit more money. So make sure to turn on notifications if you want to see 
that video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you hate it, give it a thumbs down. If you want more content just like this, consider subscribing, or you can check out one of the videos that will be up on the screen. You can also check us out on the Treadway Training blogcast. We're there every Sunday at 3 p.m. That's treadwaytraining.com slash blog. As always, God bless you and your family, and I'll see you tomorrow. Wash your hands.